post-traumatic growth is is the the positive psychological change that can come from going through traumatic experiences. Sometimes it can be challenging to reach for the growth experience when you're going through traumatic, you know, post-traumatic situations. People learning about the idea that struggle is universal. Different phases can be more challenging depending on individual differences um, or context. The cancer um, area of work is a place where that candle, that flame of hope is um, especially important. Hello everyone. It's good to see you again to a new edition of Beyond the Cancer Diagnosis interview series. Uh, today we'll talk a little bit um, more about a new concept in approaching traumatic events and not so much on issues related to, to cancer. Uh, therefore, my guest today is Taryn Green. Taryn, welcome, nice to have you with us. Thank you for uh, accepting my invitation. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, Adrian. And um, I would like to first, um, as, as a first question, if you could uh, reveal for our audience your activity at the uh, Boulder Crest Foundation and uh, after uh, how you personally define this new concept, new old concept of post-traumatic growth. Absolutely. Sure. So uh, the Boulder Crest Foundation, that's where I'm from. And I work at the Institute, which is part of the Boulder Crest Foundation. And we are the home of post-traumatic growth. So we are a nonprofit organization that are founded that is founded on the principles of post-traumatic growth or PTG. And we'll get we'll get into more, I think, about what PTG is mm -hmm. throughout our time together. Um, but, you know, at Boulder Crest, what we, we really do, our bread and butter is that we offer programs where we have translated the science of post-traumatic growth into training programs for different um, populations. Our, flag, our flagship programs are for military members, veterans, and first responders, and those are all offered free of cost. So folks can come um, from those different professions, which you know, our professions where people are exposed to potentially traumatic events quite a bit, and they can attend our programs and learn more about post-traumatic growth and the idea of how you can grow through these really challenging and traumatic things that we go through. So that's a bit about the Boulder Crest Foundation and the Institute. Um, and I guess just to say up front, post-traumatic growth is is the, the positive psychological change that can come from going through traumatic experiences. And so um, that is something that's really near and dear to my heart as I was a military member for about a decade. And it was through my experiences in the military, um, in, the, in the Air Force, going over to Afghanistan and being exposed to combat, being exposed to um, the dangers and just the realities of war that um, that was a struggle for me when I got back. And I came through that having my own transformation, my own post-traumatic growth experience and got very interested in um, this whole range of outcomes that happens when people encounter traumatic events and just began studying it and then decided to um, make that my career. Uh, people who want to overcome these uh, uh, post-traumatic events, because uh, not all of us, unfortunately, don't want or maybe don't have all the information about how to overcome these uh, uh, traumatic events in our life. And uh, as uh, every new, um, let's say, um, um, event or uh, concept, also PTG uh, has some phases. Uh, could you develop each phases of post-traumatic growth? Sure, absolutely. And that's so true that if you don't know about it, um, sometimes it can be challenging to reach for um, the growth experience when you're going through traumatic, you know, post-traumatic 
situations and dealing with a lot of the distress and anxiety and things that come with that. So we do we do understand these kind of phases that that happen for people that eventually do end up leading to post traumatic growth. And so because we understand the process of post traumatic growth, we we call it a process and also it's an outcome because we I think we'll talk about the domains a little bit too, the areas where people experience growth more of an outcome kind of um, focused conversation, but yes, to focus in on the process that happens and the phases of post-traumatic growth is a really important piece of the conversation so that folks can understand what they're looking for, um, and how to help each other recognizing where somebody might be in the process of post-traumatic growth. And, and all of this occurs within the context of, um, expert companionship, so this this idea that um, we when we are facing the struggle in the aftermath of trauma, sometimes it's really hard to recognize what's happening in ourselves. And so these what we call expert companions are folks who can meet us where we are and help create an environment of trust and openness and um, help us approach what's happening in ourselves with curiosity. That is a critical element for getting through these phases. We, we do kind of have to have that kind of connection in our life, I think, to be able to successfully navigate these phases. So the, the first phase, and these don't happen necessarily in order for folks, but I will go through them kind of numbered one through five. The first phase is education. And that's about um, people learning about the idea that struggle is universal because a big piece of trauma in the aftermath of it is feeling very alone and often not being accepting of our struggle and wondering why we're struggling so hard. Um, so a big part of the education phase is to come to the understanding that m many of us, almost all of us are going to struggle when faced with events like this and that that struggle is universal, but also there is value in the struggle though we would not wish for this type of event to happen in our life, often people do come through the other side of it and, and find that transformative process has occurred, which can be surprising and shocking. And also there are some gifts that happen in the process. So, so that's what the education phase is about. And like I said, having expert companions who come in into our, um, our sphere as we navigate this can help immensely in um, helping us to make those those connections about the universal nature of struggle and, and some of the value in struggling. The second phase, regulation, is, you know, fairly typical of any kind of therapeutic intervention and just is just something that is helpful when we're struggling in life. It, it's about calming our, our body, calming our mind, a hallmark of PTSD and and struggling with trauma is intrusive thinking and and not being able to turn your mind away from what has happened. So we do need to help people get some regulation practices in place, um, whether it be through breathing, mindfulness, connecting with nature, and other kinds of practices, so that we can create some space for folks to begin to um, process what's happened maybe even take some uh, rest, a little respite from thinking about what's happened. So regulation is a big part of the process for post-traumatic growth. The third piece is disclosure. And that's about, you know, sharing and starting to be able to disclose and share what about what's happened, about not only what has happened, what the event was, but how it's impacted us, which can sometimes be hard to accept hard to recognize, like we talked about in the beginning. And so being able to share it helps us to begin to piece together the story in a way that can incorporate growth. It can make some space for integrating the trauma, if you will, and being able to see more holistically how this trauma fits into the broader life narrative. And so that leads to the fourth phase, which is story and the story phase is when we're really seeing people integrate the trauma. They're grappling with those questions about who am I? Why am I here? Um, what does this all mean for me? What am I supposed to do now? And as those questions 
sort of are are being grappled with, there there can be some acceptance in the process and some getting almost to the other side or maybe feeling a little more rooted down in even a new path, um, finding reconnection with a path that was felt lost or with people that you didn't uh, feel connected with before that that's part of the story phase. And then, and then the last piece of that, of this is, um, service. So we often see that as, as people go through this process, they begin to identify as a person who can give back, right? Like I went through this and now I want to help others who are going through this. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be the same type of trauma, but just that you want to help others to struggle well. And then that comes full circle to to the, the trauma survivor then learning to be an expert companion to others who struggle. And uh, uh, in addition uh, with these phases, um, can we um, argue that this is a road for, uh, let's say, every patient or maybe client that want to overcome its fears, its uh, traumatic events? So, I think that's so a wonderful the, idea. In, in the sense that each uh, patient has a road. And right. uh, starting with the awareness, with maybe prevention, education. So uh, these phases might be his or her own road to, to overcome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And people get stuck in different places. Different phases can be more challenging depending on individual differences um, or context or, you know, whether you have a social support network where there are folks who are walking alongside you as companions or not. Um, if you have a pre-existing, you know, conditions of anxiety or depression, those can be, some of those things can, can make, you know, complicate it and make it, you can get a little bit stuck in different areas. So I would say it's, it's an individual journey, but we do find that, Generally, people, when they are given the training um, and the folks who come to us at Boulder Crest Foundation are struggling and, and we give them the training. We give them the training about these five phases and we have built in expert companionship and they do very well. They 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 learn the phases and they experience the phases and we study um, our participants for between 90 and 180 days when they leave. And we have found that folks generally do experience post-traumatic growth and, and they do well in the aftermath of trauma. Uh, you mentioned how many days? We we have studied people between 90 and 180 days um, after post post leaving our programming. And, um, and you can find our outcome studies on our website. Okay. Uh, you mentioned about the domains or field in which people can uh, grow following trauma. And you mentioned, for example, uh, your case as a former military. Uh, which other fields or domain uh, do you think are appropriate uh, to, to try or at least uh, get in touch with this uh, new concept of PTG? Cancer survivorship, this is for sure. Absolutely. And other fields? Absolutely. I mean, yes. And so struggle, like I said, is universal. And and I think that post-traumatic growth has been going on since the dawn of time. And, and people have been, you know, traversing challenging and traumatic events in their lives, um, in their lives since forever. So yes, I think this concept is available to everyone. And, um, and like you said, getting the information out about it is a key piece, but people often do. In fact, I um, came to the experience of post-traumatic growth myself without knowing what it was. So it, it occurs even when you don't necessarily have the language for it, um, which is which is really powerful. Uh, uh, many times in our life, we are doing uh, things like instinctively. And uh, uh, yes, uh, what uh, you are doing at uh, the foundation and this uh, concept of post-traumatic growth uh, growth, it's something uh, difficult in a way because uh, you are addressing to everyone. In general, mm -hmm. in the cases of uh, short therapies, for example, uh, they are addressing punctual to this kind of uh, 
patients or to this kind of uh, clients, uh, some, uh, some therapies, for example, to couples, others to families. So uh, the, the fact that uh, post-grammatic growth, it's a, it's a field that cover and right. it's open to everyone, uh, it is a difficult task. And uh, uh, it is also a struggle. It's a struggle on both to, on both parts, also for patients, but also for you, because uh, I'm thinking now as a clinician that statistically or uh, uh, you are you have a lot of data to process. So it, it is not an easy uh, task to do it. And uh, uh, therefore, I congratulate you for for everything that you've done so far in in this uh, field. And um, you you mentioned earlier about uh, PTSD in the field of uh, psych oncology, for example, and also in, in others. Uh, I I noticed that there are experts that, and uh, moreover patients that misunderstand the concept of post-traumatic stress disorder with post-traumatic growth. Sometimes uh, combine those two issues, sometimes uh, mix them wrong. Can you uh, give us, um, let's say, an explanation or where it's the delimitation between PTSD and PTG? Absolutely. And that's such a great point that there are a lot of um, related concepts. Um, so I'd be interested to hear about your work with, with the cancer patients and, and how that um, comes up for you. Um, so to answer your question, in terms of PTSD and PTG, what we find is that typically people, when they think about trauma these days, um, we're, which is, it's kind of a modern thing, right? That we're thinking about when, when the word trauma comes up, we think PTSD. And, and that is partly because um, of this, the field of psychology, you know, having a, um, a, a large amount of research and practice around treating mental disorders and, and over the past many decades, understanding what disorders are the introduction of the Diagnostic Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders. And so, um, which is which is really important that we understand when things go wrong for people, what that means. But in reality, the people who qualify for a PTSD diagnosis, it's actually a minority. And the, the fact is that most people are going to go through a traumatic event, a, what we call a potentially traumatic event in their lifetime. And the majority of people who go through a potentially traumatic event are going to be able to adapt or they're going to struggle and then figure out how to bounce back um, or struggle deeply and then experience post-traumatic growth. So they're not the same thing, although the distress that can be part of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD can certainly be part of the experience of post-traumatic growth. Um, they, you know, you, you can't have a post-traumatic growth experience without that distress part because the catalyst for post-traumatic growth is the experience where you, you encounter one of these potentially traumatic events and it, it basically creates the equivalent of a psychological earthquake for you in that process your core beliefs, the system of core beliefs that you've built across your lifetime are called into question. And that's extremely painful. And that is where a lot of the symptomology that's part of PTSD comes from. So I would say PTSD is a really important concept for us to understand, especially folks like yourself who are in the room with patients and, and need to be able to recognize when the distress reaches a, a, a point of severity that a diagnosis could be helpful. And that's only a piece of the larger um, range of reactions that people have to potentially traumatic events. And PTSD can certainly um, 
accompany post-traumatic growth or even give way to over time the post-traumatic growth experience, which is what we see that over time folks will shift towards post-traumatic growth when given the opportunity to, to move through these five phases. So uh, stress is like a trigger uh, to understand mm-hmm. for post-traumatic growth. Uh, you talk, uh, and we are talking uh, in this interview about uh, trauma, traumatic events, traumatic experience. In uh, Romania, my country, for example, uh, nowadays, um, every psychologist is uh, talking about trauma. So uh, if you have a trauma in your childhood, uh, this explains everything uh, you are going through when you are uh, an adult which, of course, from a, from a professional point of view, it's a mistake. And uh, I, uh, let's say, uh, want uh, you uh, to uh, ask you and uh, to, uh, let's say, um, encourage the specialist not to focus only on trauma or traumatic events because trauma and traumatic events is just a part of, let's say, bigger pictures. And uh, I will kindly ask you to, to uh, recommend uh, specialists to see and to think outside the box. Absolutely. I think that's um, very much in line with the phases we're talking about, the process we're talking about, which is um, centered on helping folks to make sense of the trauma that has happened and then that we're integrated there, you know, that, that we need to be able to get to a place where the trauma is, um, a milestone on the very long path of life and that we can, we can understand the impact that it had on us, but it doesn't have hold of us anymore right and and that's that's where the work comes in of um, helping folks to disclose helping them to sort out what to believe about what happened how to understand it the impact that it's had on us and and some of the uh, changes that have occurred in our life because of what happened we often see that folks um, for trauma for folks trauma can be kind of a turning point So they might speak of their life in this kind of before after way, before my trauma, before, before this happened, after this happened. And that's okay, I think, but we do have to kind of lean towards this forward looking, um, being focused on what are, where are we going from here? How are we going to make sense of this? How can we begin to move forward in a way that doesn't avoid what's happened, but integrates it? You mentioned, and we talked up a lot about about the struggle, and uh, we struggle uh, for a purpose. We, we struggle uh, to overcome fear. We struggle to go forward, but uh, we struggle because uh, we believe in hope. And uh, in uh, psych oncology and um, in oncology. Uh, often patients and uh, uh, doctors and clinicians have uh, different views of what hope is. In the case of post-traumatic growth, from your opinion and experience, how you define hope in these circumstances? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I imagine the cancer um, area of work is a place where that candle, that flame of hope is um especially important sometimes I, what i like to say about hope is that sometimes you know that people lose hope that is a piece that happens of um in traumatic situations and and losing a focus on hope losing it can it can feel like you've lost it and that you're never going to find it again and so i like to say you know as a, expert companions sometimes we have to kind of carry that flame of hope for other people. And um, <clears throat> in terms of, of what is that, what is hope? So traditionally hope has been defined in, in the psychological literature as more of a kind of goal centered concept 
um, where folks have identified goals and are able to kind of identify pathways of getting there and able to access motivation um, to move towards those goals. Again, we're, we're, we're talking about looking forward, um, which is very much a part of the post-traumatic growth process. You can kind of see how they relate in that way, but there's a newer conceptualization of hope which is just a really beautiful conceptualization. And that's, um, it's this goal transcendent hope. And it's the idea that hope is possible even in situations where the desired outcomes and goals seem unattainable and unlock unlikely or even impossible. And, and this feels, to me, this feels like it is a salient definition of hope maybe for cancer, folks going through cancer diagnosis and, and going through that process. And so it's called persevering hope. And it includes thinking thoughts like, I will keep trying, I will not give up. Um, and I'm motivated to wait for a successful outcome, which it, if you can think of the post-traumatic growth process that we've talked about, that feels, it's like hand in hand with what we're talking about, right? And And the losing of the hope probably happens during that core belief challenge, when the traumatic event um, calls into questions your core beliefs, and then you're just, everything is kind of blank and you're in shock, right? Yeah. So, but people find once the shock subsides, you get some of that education piece going, some regulation, that what can be really surprising is those gifts that are actually part of the process of moving through your post-traumatic growth process that weren't initially apparent because of the shock that happened. And we like to say um, at Boulder Crest, the treasure you seek lies in the cave that you fear to enter. And so a lot of times what we're uncovering through those phases and through the process is that new sense of identity or renewed sense of identity, renewed sense of purpose, and this renewed connection with hope. And I would say that the research does show that hope and post-traumatic growth are correlated. Um, and most people that I speak to who are involved with our programs, like our, our peer support guides who are leading participants through the five phases and through the experience um, of our training, they, they are so connected to the concept of hope. It is so critical to um, the experience of post-traumatic growth. Very, very interesting and, uh, uh, let's say, profound explanation of uh, hope and uh, as, as a foundation of moving forward, mm -hmm. especially in, in traumatic events uh, like uh, a cancer diagnosis and uh, also uh, others. Since uh, we are uh, coming to the end of the interview, um, I would uh, like to ask if you can uh, uh, share with us uh, uh, which are the future plans of uh, your foundation and how you personally see the future of post-traumatic growth in a world with such new concepts and uh, new therapies and new theories. So we are living now uh, tremendous times of uh, new ideas each day. So, um, how how you see PTHD in the future and uh, your future plan? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, at, at the institute, um, at the Boulder Cross Foundation, we I'm the director of research there, and I work with Dr. R Richard Tedeschi and Dr. Brett Moore. Um, so they, they, you know, we affectionately call Dr. Tedeschi the godfather of post-traumatic growth science and Brett, his colleague, who has also pioneered so much of the literature around this topic. So the three of us at the Institute are very committed to um, ensuring that the research continues to uncover even more about the post-traumatic growth process and that we continue to make that available to researchers, clinicians, but not just um, those folks, but to everybody. So the Institute is part of the larger Boulder Crest Foundation, where we're already offering training programs, like I said in the beginning, for military veterans and first responders. And we just launched this year our first ever program for everybody, for anybody, um, post-traumatic growth in practice. And you can find that on our website. That's just for um, 
for anybody who wants to experience uh, the phases in more depth and learn more about it, we also have tons of educational resources on our website. We've created a, a library of sorts, a resource center on the Bouldercrest website at bouldercrest.org, where you can go and find uh, the information about post-traumatic growth for different audiences. So I think for the future, we're going to continue to um, get the research pieces in place that we can continue to study and uncover deeper all of the concepts of part of the process and the outcomes of PTG. We're going to continue providing trainings and we're going to continue to partner with folks um, who are interested in this topic and want to get the word out and implement post-traumatic growth training or techniques into the work that you do. Thank you very much for this wonderful conversation. Good luck uh, in your research. Good luck in your uh, future plans. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other with uh, results in the future. And um, good luck uh, in your activity. Thank you very much for being today with us and uh, have a nice day. Thank you, Adrian. I'm looking forward to working with you too and talking to you more about the work that you're doing. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.